the uh, head of uh, the Department of European Studies of the uh, Institute of International Studies of the Faculty of Social Sciences of the Charles University, Mr. Tomasz Weiss. Welcome, Mr. Weiss. Thank you. Uh, and allow me, allow me to, uh, to ask Mr. Deputy Minister uh, Jakub to start. The floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Czerny, for introducing us and uh, for uh, preparing this panel, uh, which uh, I believe should be definitely more practical than academic from my perspective. But of course, uh, Tomasz might have a different opinion, uh, emphasizing the theoretical aspect of, uh, of the question which was uh, raised. Uh, uh, and the name clearly suggests that uh, the research and the practice uh, can benefit from uh, uh, each other, but uh, there is still a question mark. And frankly speaking, uh, I would be surprised if uh, there uh, to find anybody here in, in this room, uh, at this panel, having doubts uh, about uh, benefiting from, from each other. Uh, I myself am uh, here actually in a kind of schizophrenic position because it's not so many years ago when I uh, was also uh, working for academia and being paid by uh, higher education institutions and uh, of course uh, uh, preparing uh, my articles and uh, publications uh, hopefully for the purposes of implementing them by the foreign policy and of course um, uh, I uh, was only swallowed by the topic and by the everyday routine and uh, the crisis and uh, the kind of administration of uh, the uh, activities on one side and uh, uh, authentic need uh, for more horizontal, more, uh, let's say, uh, bird's eye view on uh, things we are doing, more analytical and, of course, uh, deeper analysis uh, uh, appreciated. And uh, in this regard, of course, uh, then it brings me to the answer that yes, academics are definitely people helping us and benefit, and we then benefiting from them. If you read the uh, strategy of the Czech Republic's foreign policy, uh, the concept of the Czech Republic's uh, foreign policy, um, it mentions clearly the essentiality of a holistic approach uh, when dealing with things. Uh, let me quote, the existing international order is epitomized by a high level of interdependence, increasing the likelihood that local incidents will have global repercussions, whether negative or positive, and clouding the predictability of future developments. 
This interdependence makes international cooperation and uh, a holistic approach all the more essential. Well, then, uh, uh, in my definition of uh, holistic approach, actually, I'm convinced that this uh, can be reached, uh, or this can be <coughs> done only in a frequent, uh, in a frequent dialogue and frequent interaction with researchers. Uh, interactions between diplomats and academics uh, can not be about conferences, workshops, roundtables only. Uh, we need a strong linkage and result-oriented cooperation. And uh, in, this, uh, in this way, or in this sense, uh, it's a long-term goal of the government uh, to foster ties between the public service and the research sector. Again, one of the priorities when it comes to the strategies of, uh, uh, of research and uh, science uh, in the governmental documents. Coming back to this building, to this house, uh, to, uh, to my institution uh, for Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, research, uh, with its critical reflection. Uh, it's uh, not only about mirroring, which I mentioned first, or the uh, looking at the mirror. We are not uh, always 100% happy about. Uh, that is important, but it's also uh, concretely demonstrated by a couple of uh, recent uh, collaborative uh, uh, endeavors. Uh, I would mention a uh, few of them recently, very useful uh, uh, and very practical. Uh, that was the cooperation with researchers uh, uh, on so-called political stocktaking uh, and consequently preparations of the strategy of the Czech Republic's foreign policy I just mentioned. Uh, that was in 2015 when the new cabinet uh, uh, was formed and uh, a clear kind of authentic need for political stock-taking of our foreign and security policies uh, started. Uh, during that kind of process, we unfolded, uh, uh, we unfolded our foreign policy into elements uh, that were item by item discussed with researchers from outside the ministry. And again, uh, they provided, uh, of course, uh, relevant and very uh, valuable inputs. There were 10 roundtables first. The results of those roundtables uh, were processed in the form of analytical uh, um, papers. They were scrutinized uh, uh, and they were also, um, I don't want to say supervised or controlled or censored by, definitely looked at by the minister himself. Uh, and uh, then these results uh, uh, were the basis for the concept of the Czech foreign policy uh, itself. And then again, of course, uh, the final draft of the uh, strategy was discussed with external experts at three roundtables. Uh, second example, uh, the recent one, uh, even more recent, uh, 2016, the uh, European Global Strategy, uh, suggested by Madame Mogherini and uh, by our Brussels colleague, uh, which uh, again was a complex academic and political exercise uh, when preparing it. Uh, of course, uh, we wanted to show the ownership of the member states, but we also wanted to make it uh, a practical uh, uh, exercise when implementing uh, those policies or preparing uh, this exercise, uh, this strategy uh, for uh, later implementation, and that is uh, what is going right now. And again, uh, the advisors as well as researchers and academia was invited to give us uh, a little bit of inputs. Uh, and now the developments of the implementation are, are the case. It might be two concrete examples of one-time exercise. Uh, the question is uh, what will be the follow-up about uh, and uh, whether these activities will be over when the new minister comes and the new strategy will be written and what will be, again, the role of uh, uh, the, 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 new, uh, the new cabinet uh, and, uh, again, the need to reflect what's wrong, where we are heading to. That's why I believe the long-term uh, kind of continuity or horizontal view on the public administration side is needed. And uh, the good uh, way how to uh, make this working is uh, to establish a scientific council of the, the, the ministry. Uh, to avoid any kind of overlaps uh, and to uh, guarantee synergies and, as I mentioned, long-term view, 
uh, to have clear lines between uh, the political uh, demands and uh, homeworks, uh, assignments we are given, and uh, also the academic perspective for freedoms. Uh, Scientific Council would be a great platform for, uh, for uh, bridging these and for accommodating both. Uh, so it's going to be in a couple of weeks when the, uh, the, this, this new body of the ministry will, uh, will be established. Uh, I should say re-established because there was a certain kind of tradition of having uh, that kind of uh, more, let's say, analytical uh, platform than the administrative uh, meetings of the management uh, of the ministry. And uh, here we would actually go uh, uh, in a modernized way to something what uh, I believe is, uh, uh, is a practical and common uh, body in, uh, at other ministries uh, in other countries. One more remark, uh, or two more remarks. Uh, I mentioned the revolving doors uh, being the case in, uh, uh, in uh, my uh, CV, but uh, being rather uh, exceptional still in uh, our foreign service. Uh, in our public administration uh, as such. Uh, I would also say that it's more um, uh, a problem for the continental or European way of uh, doing business uh, here uh, in, uh, in uh, Europe. Uh, and interestingly, one, more, uh, one small remark from Brussels, uh, where I uh, served as an ambassador to Corporate One for a couple of years recently. Uh, when you look at uh, the structures of European External uh, Action Service, uh, how it was built up, and the style, the institutional culture of that new institution, I think that it embodies this kind of uh, tradition or the lack of uh, uh, the, uh, the revolving doors tradition. The, the tradition of a more petrified uh, uh, perspective on things. So it doesn't reflect uh, those, those kind of needs. While I still would believe that uh, there are examples uh, like the one coming from the United States where the foreign and security policy uh, is, uh, uh, is based on uh, uh, something uh, what the revolving door uh, implements. So uh, that is more about being uh, common or appreciated in their traditions. Uh, our new uh, Public Service Act uh, from 2014-2015 doesn't help us. Uh, it doesn't make things uh, easier. It actually makes uh, things more difficult. That's why we are in the process of preparing the uh, new law on um, foreign service. And uh, still, uh, we, we don't have a good answer uh, what is the ideal model uh, and how the revolving door concept can be accommodated. Uh, if there are ideal models, uh, I would love to uh, hear good examples, uh, best practices, uh, what are the enablers of, uh, of, of this, uh, since Exemplar Trahunt and the individual cases are not good enough. Uh, uh, it, it, it's definitely, uh, there is a need for more systemic uh, approach in this. And my last remark when it comes to uh, the this general question uh, about benefiting and about uh, cooperation between the two sides of the barricade, which shouldn't be a barricade, it's clearly uh, the whole field, the whole problem of applied research uh, and uh, applied research specifically for the public uh, administration. Uh, of course, research projects and operational analysis is in place um, and uh, there is this uh, basis uh, or platform uh, where we, we meet. Uh, I mentioned the reform of the science and uh, research in, uh, in this country in 2008. The establishment of the technological agency of the Czech Republic um, would be uh, uh, one example where institutes like International uh, Institute for International <coughs> Relations, uh, Academy of Sciences, higher education institutions can, uh, can benefit or can, uh, can uh, clearly see uh, an added value. Uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, by the way, in this system uh, becomes a provider of institutional support um, from 2018 onwards. And thus, of course, uh, it should have all those tools uh, I mentioned before in, in, um, uh, in practice or put in place. So that is the very last practical remark, uh, uh, and that, uh, that brings us back to applied research issues, which were uh, discussed in a panel uh, only a couple of minutes ago. Uh, one, one great example of uh, you know, connecting uh, academia and 
let's say, public administration. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Deputy Minister, for the uh, intellectual remarks. And let's see the topic from the other side. Uh, please, uh, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Weiss to. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you very much for the invitation. <clears throat> I understood that I'm supposed to give the other perspective. Uh, and just to defend why, uh, uh, to introduce that myself, I have been participating in the so-called applied research uh, for some time, uh, so I know the ups and downs of what it, what it actually implies. Uh, but I would like to address the topic a bit, uh, a bit bro more broadly, and uh, although I prepared my notes before they kind of fit very well with uh, with what uh, what the deputy minister just said, uh, so I, I don't really think it will be the other perspective. I might just uh, emphasize other aspects of uh, of the same topic. I would start with uh, with the question: Why are actually academics useful for practitioners? Uh, and deputy minister already said that they they <clears throat> they give the bird eye view. Uh, I would even call it long-term view, uh, but I wouldn't downplay the fact that uh, academic or academics and academic analysis should be somehow theoretically informed, and this is something that uh, probably rings all the warning bells uh, with the practitioners, uh, because that automatically means this, it is completely detached. Uh, it is uh, unapplicable, uh, it is useless. Uh, I don't really think it needs to be detached. I think it just depends on the academic. Uh, but what it contains is uh, careful work with words, with concepts. Uh, and I think that what the academics can offer uh, is a detailed analysis of how the concepts that are generally used in foreign policy uh, what, what implications they actually, they actually bring, bring about. Uh, and, and to explain and to understand how problematic these concepts uh, that on the everyday basis uh, are somehow very easy to, to, to use, uh, how problematic they actually might be in the end and, and in the long run uh, of a diplomacy. What the academics also have and what the practitioners don't have uh, or at least on the paper, uh, is the time to study contexts and best practices. Well, frankly, academics do not have much time, uh, as everybody else, uh, although we would love to have some time, but, uh, but probably we still have a bit more time than deputy ministers or directors of, uh, of departments here at the ministry. Uh, so relatively, we probably have the time to study the contexts and best practices. Now the question is, are practitioners useful for academics? Uh, obviously as a source of information, they are. Uh, they also give them some kind of real-world check. Uh, we, uh, at events like this one and at private conversation, we run into uh, the, uh, the situation that we need to explain our long-term conceptualized work uh, to somebody who actually needs to have things done, uh, which is always useful. Uh, and my question somehow in, in a reply to what has been said is, is the question of being holistic. Uh, I have some doubts uh, that the academics are actually holistic. Uh, I think they are e more and more uh, specialized and, and, and that the academia and the research uh, has been so broad and so wide uh, and there has been so much of it that it is actually very difficult to be holistic. Uh, maybe a few excellent persons uh, manage to be at least partially holistic, uh, but I have my doubts that the academia as a whole uh, is sufficiently holistic to provide this holistic uh, concept. I guess to, in order to be holistic, we need to be holistic altogether. Uh, in a way. Now that brings me to the question whether we cooperate with each other enough. Uh, and my answer to that uh, would be that 
Yes, uh, sometimes. Uh, and, I, and my maybe problem or, or my, uh, my criticism to how we cooperate with each other uh, would probably be that it depends too much on individuals uh, and it is too, uh, too little structured. Uh, although structures like the symposium helps us a lot, uh, but as the Deputy Minister just said, workshops are fine, but uh, they are not enough just in themselves. Uh, they need to have something, uh, something to it to be more practical. Uh, now, the, at the same time, I would say that the cooperation between the academia and now, I, and I, I would like to distinguish between the think tanks and the academia because this is really two different worlds uh, to a large extent. Although in the in the in the small Czech pond, they overlap a lot, uh, and most think tankers are academics at the same time and many academics are think tankers. Uh, I would say that still the cooperation between the officials and the academia or the think tanks is actually pretty good. Uh, where we really lack is the cooperation between academics or think tankers and politicians. Uh, and I think uh, that would be the main problem for the Czech foreign policy when we talk about the Czech foreign policy, uh, that we have this gap not really between uh, between academia or, or policy work and the officials or the ministry, but rather between the ministry and the academia on one hand uh, and the political leadership. Uh, now I do not refer to the minister, but rather to the politicians dealing with foreign policy in general. Uh, and, and that there I, I think there is, uh, there is a lot of room for, uh, for improvement. Now, there have been obviously examples of good practice. Uh, the Deputy Minister has already mentioned the one that I prepared as well, where I participated as well, which was the, the debate on the foreign policy concept last year. Uh, but there are obviously many things that, that can be done a bit better. Now, and I have basically two of them uh, on, uh, on, uh, on offer. Uh, one of them would refer to the applied research that has already been mentioned. Uh, the Czech system of, of applied research is, is highly problematic for social sciences. Uh, we have discussed that at this symposium in past years many times. Uh, for us, dealing with uh, applied research on foreign policy, the creation of, of uh, the technological agency hasn't been very, uh, very helpful. Uh, although it might have been logical uh, uh, from the from the bureaucratic perspective, but but for the social science, the sciences uh, in general, I think this has been rather a complication. We'll see how what happens when when part of the money returns back to the ministry. Uh, but but the main problem to some extent is the incompatibility between what the academics are supposed to to produce and what the ministry or the technological agency uh, expect. Uh, the problem is to somehow align work for the ministry with the obligations to produce what is uh, by other parts of the state recognized as science, uh, which is a different thing and the academics basically need to, because they do not have that much time, uh, in, they need to provide the, the, the conceptual and long-term view, so they do not have that much time for writing, and they, to some extent, need to make deals, whether they do actually write the applied research or the, uh, or the basic research, or however you, you call it, but what is basically recognized as academic work in the Czech Republic. So there I would see a problem, and it is obviously related to, uh, to money and, and how research and, and science basic and applied is, is funded uh, in, in the Czech Republic. Now, the second would be a bit more optimistic, so I would suggest this is something that I don't really believe we can, we can change in a short-term horizon. Uh, what we probably could change, and what I would suggest, uh, would be to improve the everyday contacts between the individuals. Because I really believe that rather than structures, individuals are important, I believe there should be something like uh, establish something like an exchange mechanism between uh, something substituting the revolving doors 
that uh, that are very difficult with the with the civil service act uh, some kind of exchange mechanism when the when the civil servants can for a short time a year half a year leave the civil service I, I guess it is possible somehow but I don't really think it is it is widely used uh, but legally I guess it, it is possible and leave for academia or think tanks uh, just in order to have time to get the long-term view uh, to have time to think a bit more in long-term perspective and also to see how the other world actually works and what, what they can expect from the other world. Uh, and the same would be true for the academics. Uh, some kind of short time, ex uh, short time exchange working at the ministry for half a year, a year. Uh, it doesn't have to be just the students who come here as interns, uh, but rather established academics because uh, having, uh, having experienced how the ministry actually works would probably help them deliver better results. Again, I'm not sure if, if that would be possible uh, for here from the regulations, but, but obviously uh, the academic world uh, is used for sub uh, to sabbaticals, so, so there the, the, the problem would probably be uh, less, uh, less acute. Uh, I would call it a revolving door simulator uh, or, or something like that. Uh, it would also uh, prevent uh, occasions when uh, either uh, former officials try to enter academia without knowing what they are actually entering or the other way around. Uh, so it might, uh, might prevent some problems uh, for the future. Uh, but I, I think, I think uh, there are quite a few people who have other ideas about that, so I, I would like to stay rather shorter than longer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. I'm, I'm sure there are, because uh, it is not, uh, it is here uh, by purpose that everybody has a mic in front of this. So uh, we, can, uh, we can understand this session as a discussion more than presentation. Uh, but before, maybe before opening the, 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 the space for questions, I would uh, uh, come back to this symposium because we are a part of uh, 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 an event which is a very good uh, uh, practical example of uh, functioning of the uh, of the interaction between the academics and the execution here. Uh, maybe uh, Mr. Kozan is here, who has a lot of experience with uh, uh, who is the organizer and the host of this uh, symposium. Could you tell us maybe something from your perspective? I wasn't really prepared to say anything, but uh, thank you very much, and thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy uh, uh, Minister, for being here, here with us. Um, I, it's been seven years since we organized the first uh, symposium, and I can tell that the uh, that the general uh, nature of the of the interaction between the ministry and various ministries and the uh, the scholars or analysts. I I'm, I'm not saying it's because of the symposium, but it it improved. It, I, 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 can sell, I can say that with, uh, without any doubt. I can see that uh, through very much informal networking, it's not about formal, uh, formal uh, institutions, but uh, through informal networking, I can, I can see that uh, the, the world of scholars and the world of uh, practitioners got simply closer. I, I, again, I'm not saying it's because of the symposium. It's just that this is something I can I can um, I can see myself over the years. Uh, I think we are now in 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 much better uh, com in in, a, in let's say in a comfort zone when we're talking to each other than we were some uh, nine or eight ten years ago. But my question is, and I'm very happy to have uh, the, the the representatives of Brno uh, Masaryk University. I would like to uh, hear their perspective because we had this kind of a discussion here, what is it, four years ago or three years ago, uh, when we had uh, representatives of um, regional universities. And uh, I, I think that, that our discussion, or I mean, what I'm trying to say is that, that we are basically Prague, very much Prague centered in this discussion and in general. and. Uh, my question is whether uh, whether the outreach to other universities would help somehow to because actually this was the original goal of the symposium 
was to interconnect academia, practitioners, and politicians. It doesn't work with the politicians. This is something that Tomáš Weiss said. That we're still at point zero, basically, with few exceptions. Uh, we wanted to uh, interconnect with, uh, let's say, the, uh, the other geographical parts of the, of the Czech Republic, and that didn't work pretty much either. And we also wanted to interconnect uh, other disciplines. We in invited uh, uh, law experts, uh, sociologists, uh, historians, and so on, economists, and that didn't work either. So basically what we managed is we managed to socialize better within Prague with people who are already pretty much socialized anyway. So my question is how would you, you know, how, do, do you need some kind of a better outreach to the ministry as, you know, speaking for, for Ibrano University or if, if there is someone from Harabets or from Olomouc, I'm mis I think that the um, Deputy Minister, you, you were uh, in Olomouc, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, this, this would be the other step, in my opinion. And we also managed to internationalize the debate, which I'm happy for the, uh, within the symposium. But the other goals we just didn't, didn't manage to do. So if, if Audrey Krpec or, or, or Vlada Nadula can, can, can join me for the discussion, I'd be really happy for it. Yes. Yeah, thank you. So, so it's question really for us. Okay, it's not very easy to answer because we both, both of us, we are doing political economy. So we are the example of uh, the other sciences here, and people from our department who are doing international relations. They they didn't arrive actually. So possibly. Possibly uh, the regional universities. I don't consider Brno to be regional <laughs> university. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably they should be involved much more here. I believe that uh, the, in in the in the first years they were arriving in big numbers and had some impact, hopefully. But I feel it uh, very strongly that in Brno the the contact with with the, those like pra people who really influence the foreign policy is much less than here. That's definitely truth. Uh, but uh, the Faculty of Social Studies is focusing really on the networking with other universities much more than trying to have some impact on foreign policy. Uh, that's an example of our department. Very clearly, you can say so. Well, head of department is now in Israel and last week was in the United States, but in both cases they were dealing with other universities and, and discussing some, some double degree programs, not really influencing the foreign policy. That's right. Thank you very much. Uh, Benjamin Tallis from the Institute of International Relations. Um, I was formerly a practitioner working for the EU on security practice uh, on a number of different missions and subsequently made the transition into academia and then into policy advising as well through my work with the, uh, the Institute of International Relations here in Prague. I have to say, I, while I appreciate very much the self-critique that is going on on behalf of the Ministry and the Czech academics, uh, the situation is, from my experience at least, much better here than it is in the UK. Uh, to a large extent, where there is actually quite a lot more interaction uh, from what I know from, from British colleagues. There's a lot more interaction here and a lot more willingness to listen to different ideas rather than just um, the same old people saying the same old things. So there is clearly something actually positive to, to celebrate and I've been really positively surprised since coming to, to work in the Institute that that is the case. And that particularly relates to the kind of work that, that I do, which is much more in the interpretivist, uh, critical constructivist uh, mode, rather than the classic sort of mainstream IR analysis. And the willingness to be um, approached with such ideas um, made itself clear in the discussions about the European Global Strategy that the Deputy Minister mentioned. And this was actually an interesting point that I think academics can add value, not only in providing concepts, but also in and analyzing how concepts are used and so on, but in really challenging that contemporary use and that everyday use that is made, and I think that's what Tomasz Weiss was, was pointing to. And indeed, this taking out of comfort zone 
to invert a little bit what Mikhail Korjan was saying, I think it's what we can do for each other. Um, there is, I think, a very good value in uh, the idea that Tomasz Weiss mentioned of temporary postings in, on both sides. This is when um, we can experience what it's like to be the other temporarily. This is the thrill of the trans, this is the thrill of trying on some different clothes and looking from a different perspective. Um, and that indeed is what we need to shake the scales from our own eyes to some extent. This is what a, a colleague and I wrote about this experience of crossing between these different roles and actually the two viewpoints you get, you can actually get a much deeper perspective by holding them both in mind. This double reflexivity that this can give you is a true value for critical academics as well as for much more normally problem solving oriented uh, academics. And I think this is where, I mean, th there's experience of this in other countries as well. If we look at Eva Neumann and the role of NUPI in, uh, in Norway, um, Eva's work with the foreign ministry there, then leading to a wonderful academic article as well, which can come from this, the, it, a speech the whole ministry can stand behind or why nothing changes in Norwegian foreign policy um, as a way of understanding what is going on within the ministry. And so this internal experience can lead to critical moments like that. It can also lead to far better targeted and better translated advice and I think this work of translation is something that we really need to to focus on indeed how we maximize the leverage of the research that we do as academics into policy practice which for anyone working in a critical paradigm doesn't have to mean setting out it doesn't have to mean being instrumentalized it actually does justice to the critical impulse to go and change things and go and have real impact so to summarize um, I think the situation is not as bad as you say but I think we still have uh, a lot, a lot of way to go and potential to explore. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for prizing us, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Talis. I would ask our panelists, uh, do you want to comment on this? If I may, uh, two or three remarks, uh, but still, I'm happy to, to listen more uh, since it, it should be really the you can uh, Q and A uh, part uh, than um, you know following or continuing in the presentations. Uh, I didn't mention the word policy analysis and policy advising. Uh, of course, uh, th this this uh, is part of the uh, political science or social sciences, uh, what, what where the interconnection clearly lies in. And uh, if the title uh, is based on a diplomatic world or the uh, world. Uh, according to experts and the world according to diplomats, then uh, it, uh, it of course narrows the whole, uh, the scope of our discussion. So then uh, of course, uh, Mr. Kuchan's uh, question about the relevance of the policy analysis or policy advising uh, to the uh, world uh, in the capitals or p central public administration structures or regional uh, uh, public administration structures uh, is of course uh, targeted, uh, you know, in a broad sense of the word and, and here of course there are better examples or worse examples but still uh, a long uh, way to go in terms of diplomatic world or specifically the foreign policy field uh, diplomacy versus foreign, foreign policy then of course um, the limits are, are, are clear because uh, uh, the, the bridging with uh, non-metropolitan uh, actors um, uh, is, is more difficult. And then, of course, the crossing between the world to these two worlds, um, two, two small remarks, um, if not revolving doors, then the temporal, temporal posting or at least the revolving door simulator uh, was actually never um, uh, discussed deeply uh, by none of those two worlds. Uh, and uh, I never remember any uh, task force uh, uh, who would be suggesting when preparing public servant law, for example, or public servant act, or uh, the uh, long-term strategies of various think tanks and research institutions that this should this would be embodied or clearly mentioned or defined, and uh, then, of course, uh, financially uh, sustainably um, uh, practiced uh, by uh, both, uh, both players. So, so uh, it is, of course, remarkable, of course, the comfort zones and the meetings uh, and very interesting and very active uh, interactions take place. But again, what I mentioned as a systemic solution, it was never uh, really deeply analyzed and, um, and uh, never 
prepared uh, professionally uh, by none of us. So uh, it is, for example, for me, one of the concrete inputs that it should be practical uh, and uh, there should be some practical, uh, practical solutions. Uh, if this uh, is true for interns or fellowships, uh, then uh, it should be really also um, uh, the case for the uh, career-oriented uh, uh, players on both sides. Thank you. I don't really think there's there is much I can add to that. Uh, on the on the question of regional uh, impact, we've discussed that long time, and it, it is it is obviously ultimately it is the personal choice of the individual uh, whether or not they want to. And obviously, it is it is physically less comfortable, I guess. Uh, to do work on, on foreign policy if you, for every single interview, you just need to travel. So, so I, I kind of understand that. Uh, uh, I, you know, researching European policy and European politics, I, I kind of feel with colleagues from Brno or regional universities uh, because I have the same, uh, same relation to people working at universities in Brussels. Because for every every single interview, I need to travel to Brussels, which is even more costly than than from Brno to Prague or from Olomouc to Prague. But uh, but this is an individual choice of of the person of the researcher, uh, whether they want to work on issues, whether they want to have uh, a policy impact. Uh, what I think is is the other part is an, and we can't really change that. Some people want, some people won't. Uh, will, some people won't. Uh, what we what what could be discussed somehow and what is limitating at the moment is the and I will come back to that and I'm sorry about it uh, but it is the structure of the funding uh, at uh, at the Czech universities to a, to a large extent uh, and I know that Ministry of Foreign Affairs can't do much about that uh, but the lack of institutional funding long-term institutional funding uh, limits. Uh, limits the uh, the willingness, I think, of academics to to uh, many of them to get involved in in policy related work, uh, because uh, when the funding is really based on 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 yearly uh, yearly output, you just do not have time to uh, to to spend on some policy work that doesn't count, uh, neither to your career uh, nor to your institution's money. Uh, so, so this is a, this is a, a limitation which I which I really feel greatly uh, the choice that uh, that people need to make, uh, and and the the technological agencies funding uh, just can't really bridge uh, this uh, this funding gap because that's simply un uncomparable. Yeah, thank you. Uh, are there other questions, remarks, please? Eliška Tomalová, Faculty of Social Sciences, Charles University. Uh, thank you. Um, the topic of this debate is how can research and practice benefit from each other. Um, being, an, being an academic working on issues such as branding and public diplomacy, I have another comment on this. And this is linked to the external education policy, research diplomacy, science diplomacy, which I think have been neglected in Czech foreign policy. And we can find many uh, mutual, uh, a lot of mutual interest between the two worlds of academia and uh, the practitioners. It would be a long-term investment uh, in the reputation of the country. It has economic, uh, cultural and academic uh, economic, cultural and academic implications. So I think that that should be included more in the long term foreign policy strategy and there is no coherent strategy uh, uh, in the moment. Yeah, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Okay, thanks. Uh, I'm Václav Němec. I'm actually also a member of the government's Council for Sustainable Development. And I am working in the science more than 60 years. And uh, I would uh, say from my personal 
abundant experiences that the question is not if it is uh, Prague or Brno or, uh, or other Olomouc and, and so on. The question is just, or the core of the question is just the, the personal responsibility of any expert, of any, any scientist. And um, now we have a, a special uh, a, a special approach to this uh, that uh, people are uh, recognizing or uh, only uh, or some of them only what uh, what is their own opinion <laughs> and without any respect to other opinion and uh, what is the, the worst thing is just that the even the repre top representatives of scientists and so so, so they are supporting only the mainstream and not and nothing as others i can give for instance an example uh, a very recently now uh, 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 a repeated example from Italy, from the earthquake of L'Aquila, <laughs> and uh, it was also something that was a very bad, uh, very bad responsibility of, of experts. And the situation has been changed, but uh, even now, these uh, the same experts uh, even now say, no, no, we have uh, we have predicted even this new. Uh, this new earthquake and nobody has a, but uh, at the, at the, in fact these people were responsible for for very bad uh, evaluation of the danger which uh, was uh, five days prior to the real and very bad earthquake in Aquila so that's the case that we have to uh, to keep in mind uh, I'm uh, very happy that uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Zawaralek, made uh, just, I read it already about uh, two, three months ago, but I uh, also listened to his comment now when he's, uh, when he's in, in New York, and he is ready to accept any of these uh, various, not, not only the mainstream. So I hope that the Czech. Uh, Republic uh, or the Czech uh, foreign policy will, will uh, now follow a very good, uh, a, a very good approach to these uh, to these problems. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for this important comment on uh, on the personal responsibility of uh, scientists and uh, the acceptance of the public sphere. Uh, I would ask uh, I would ask the panelists. Uh, do you do you have any? Uh, comments on this or yeah please maybe i resign on the on the science diplomacy uh although i agree uh but i would like to react on the on the experts uh in social sciences i think this is this is a lasting issue uh because there are no truths there are always interpretations, explanations, and there's n never an absolute truth. So I think that while switching from an academic to a policy analysis, I think a, a person has, has a huge re personal responsibility to distinguish where his or her political opinions come into play and how they shift and change uh, the result of the analysis. Uh, it is the same, obviously, with uh, with civil servants, uh, but I guess with civil servants it is a bit easier because the civil servants get the task. Uh, and there is no, not that much room in, uh, for, for personal views and, and for, for ideological views or whatever. Uh, with, with, uh, analy with political analysis, uh, there is much more room that, or much, much more uh, opportunity for that to, to come to play. And that, uh, so, so this is something that is a personal responsibility for every, uh, to every expert. And I think uh, that you, uh, I, I'm not really reacting that much to what, what you said, but, but uh, I would like to raise the issue of who is an expert. Uh, and that is another problem, because we have had uh, mainly because of these 24-7 uh, new news chains who simply need all these talking heads. 
uh, and who end up inviting, especially when it's in Czech and there are not that many people, basically anybody uh, who, is, who is willing to express their opinion on a particular issue. Uh, and because we all vote, we all have opinions and we all have traveled, so we all have opinions on international relations. Uh, there are many experts who are actually not experts. Uh, and it, a huge problem of the debate probably also is to, to distinguish the, the public expertise of people who might be expert in one field, but they colloquially comment uh, other fields where, where they are just complete lay, lay people, uh, only not knowing that they are lay people, uh, and distinguishing the real experts. Uh, and that is obviously a task for both the, the, the scholar community uh, to label people who are not experts as not experts uh, and, and to the policy makers uh, to, to pick and choose who they actually listen to and who, who they don't. Uh, but it is difficult. There is no answer to that and I think this is an ongoing process all the time. And obviously experts, even if they are experts, can make mistakes. Uh, and this is another issue that you just can't can't get rid of. Well, I, I think it was exactly what I would normally comment on if I didn't resign for having a floor before, uh, and that is precisely uh, the, the point. And I think this is definitely a task uh, for both uh, both worlds. Uh, it's of course uh, not about uh, controlling the public debate or public uh, the quality of the public de debate or the public discourse, but it's really about uh, being able to differentiate and uh, about uh, also let's say labeling uh, the different uh, roles. And thus, uh, this is something also what brings us to the uh, science um, uh, or education diplomacy. Uh, uh, if uh, we would have that kind of public uh, public perception, then that if definitely that is something to export to uh, export. So yeah, I didn't comment on this. I wrote it down uh, as a task for somebody else at the ministry and for myself, of course, uh, as a as a side uh, effect of other everyday life activities. But again, it is a general question, you know, what would you expect from a scholar and what would you expect from a diplomacy um, and, uh, and their roles. Uh, and of course, if we broaden the scope uh, uh, of what diplomacy is, then of course, education, science, culture should be uh, more emphasized in uh, what we can do and uh, what should be, you know, our, our roles. And the same would be true. Uh, what is the public role of a scholar uh, when it comes to the public debate on this? Yeah, thank you. I, am, I tend to uh, uh, to see these remarks of Deputy Minister Duras closing remarks of our session. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, uh, but uh, maybe we have uh, a few minutes more for one, one last question. Do we have? Yeah. Yeah. Please, Michal Kozan. So thank you. I would I would use this uh, as an opportunity to come back to the issue that that Tomas raised uh, raised. Uh, that's the um, that's the outreach to the political realm somehow. I'm, I know that we're not, I'm not talking about research as such, but more of a about more of an activist approach to policy uh, influencing or politics actually influencing. And what I'm trying to, or what I would like to say is we, we used to have a very interesting format uh, at the Institute of International Relations when we would invite experts from political parties, usually from the uh, Foreign Policy Committee or sometimes, sometimes uh, even members of parliament would come. And uh, we ran that for about five years until we just got tired of it, I have to say. Somehow, and but I think we should come back to this idea because it it there were some fruits of that because first the, the networking was important because the people from the political parties and the experts started to know each other and and it it just just made a lot of sense and we and you could also see that the debate about different issues we had we we had maybe uh, one meeting in, in in three months or something like that on very controversial issues like russia china we would have communists uh, civic democrats and so on and so on and i think because what we see is a growing gap between the experts between the diplomats you know 
at the ministry, maybe the expert community on the one hand, and 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 the political sphere and the public on the other. And this 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 gap is just not closing; it's growing. It's it is getting deeper and deeper. And I think that what we can do together, actually, not for each other, but but together, is try to come back to this idea and to outreach to the experts of the of the of the political parties here in in the Czech Republic and to start to initiate this dialogue again. And now I, I would very much like to see that uh, happening. So I don't want to stand uh, between you and the dinner, uh, and of course uh, that uh, the time is running. But uh, yeah, I would fully subscribe to this because the frustration is mutual. Or I would say, likewise. I mean uh, that in this case, uh, this is what Tomas already mentioned. We are on the same boat, and uh, the gap is there, and uh, uh, thus the quality of the public debate or the political. Uh, this course uh, gets definitely lower or it receives a, a lower quality because of the uh, inputs uh, are either lacking or no, no way of bridging these uh, two. So uh, here uh, I think that uh, the, the, the lost tradition of this kind of discussion uh, in the public uh, uh, sphere uh, has to be reestablished. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for coming. Thanks to the both panelists and thanks to the participants of, our, of this session. And I think it has to be continued in the future. Thank you.